Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Engineer Verui. Sir, now, you've mentioned the, the electronic billing system, uh, especially for uh, the taxation system, yeah. and we are in uh, the month of the taxation, <coughs> March. Yeah. Now, it has been applied for uh, some time for the companies. Now they're talking about maybe introducing it to certain professions uh, and then individuals and freelancers. Yeah. Now, how has the process been so far with the multinationals? Because now you don't have to deal with it by the end of the fiscal year. You actually mm -hmm. deal with it daily, if yeah. not monthly. Yeah. And uh, how is that process and how, how how realistically can it be implemented even for individuals and for people of certain professions? Well, um, like you mentioned, is, 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 an, is an era of tax, digital taxation system. Mm -hmm. So it's starting by the super projects and, and the big project. Then we go down more for the smaller traders and even for the individual uh, professions like uh, lawyers, like doctors, like mm -hmm. everything is like that. So uh, I believe it's going to be realistic if it is connected with the government uh, services for that person. For example, mm -hmm. now, if, if, if the uh, customer come to the lawyer and start asking him for the service, he must do for him uh, 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 like an official uh, 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 cooperation with him. So once mm -hmm. he go for the governmental service, the government will know that this person has dedicated to do service for you. Mm -hmm. So which means based on his national ID, mm -hmm. I know that there is a customer come to you and ask you for the specific service. So automatically we'll come for him and say, hey, based on your national ID, I have five customers came asking you to help them in the court for specific issues or specific things. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's actually specific for the service and profession that they are doing. And I think uh, it's not that easy to deploy it, but it's possible mm -hmm. uh, based on the uh, uh, connecting all the information between the other governmental uh, sites. Mm -hmm. For the doctors, for example, uh, uh, at each kind of um, uh, place in the doctors, once he has uh, uh, a reservation or something, it comes mm -hmm. with one client based, mm -hmm. so it can be tracked based on how many uh, client is doing. Uh, also by the uh, POS transactions, mm -hmm. uh, once you have a POS transactions, means you provide service for that customers mm -hmm. that can be tracked uh, based on that. It, it's kind of a, a very interleaved network, but it's possible to track it based on the professions and also uh, 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 the knowledge of the customers dealing with uh, this kind of service is important. So you need mm -hmm. to keep your receipt. Whatever the service you are taking, you need to ask for receipt mm -hmm. because you are paying for this tax. So uh, you, know, you need to make sure that this tax is going to the right place. Yes. Uh, there's no any manipulations uh, around that taxation. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easier to be dealt with in terms of established. I mean, if, if you are... Uh, of a certain profession or have some sort of uh, an established financial profile within yeah. the government, it is easy. But what about the parallel sort mm -hmm. of economy, the freelancers, for instance? Yeah. How would you be able to motivate them or encourage them or uh, really make it mandatory for freelancers and people who are working within the, the, the parallel or shadow economy to, to participate and to be obliged by dealing uh, financially, electronically, and uh, digitally, because that would all be for the goal of financial inclusion. Yeah, I, I agree. Let me give you an example. Uh, this kind of freelancers and uh, you know the, the YouTubers and this kind of uh, jobs nowadays that mm -hmm. has been new. My suggestion for that side is we need to create like um, an official entity, mm -hmm. official um, organization that accumulate anybody that's interesting to do that job to have like a representative uh, official something related to the taxation and the government mm -hmm. that um, uh, like the other kind of um, um, you know uh, artwork and this kind of mm -hmm. stuff uh, they should have uh, an official identity mm -hmm. that make them uh, 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 propose their own services and mm -hmm. pay taxation for them that's from the uh, the government side and then um, you will not be allowed to do this kind of, of work if you are not part of that mm -hmm. uh, organization at first. And also taxation need to be uh, calculated uh, 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 in a fair side that they will not come and say, that, hey, uh, I don't need to pay all this taxation. I can do it from anywhere in the world and I can go this and do it from the other side. So we need, like you said, uh, 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 motivate them to come and say, hey, 
this is a, a benefits that you kind of uh, have mm -hmm. from the government who support you going to provide you uh, a, a lot of service in that side and mm -hmm. you are free to do your job and that is the taxation that needed from you mm -hmm. so it, it will make them uh, feel more confident to do the job and even willing to uh, go more in the taxation mm -hmm. side in that side well you've mentioned artists or youtubers and their work would be visible for yeah. everyone to see but what yeah. about uh, technicians what about electricians but plumbers, uh, carpenters, I mean, how would you be able to include these sort of professions and r oblige them to, to work with a, a digital electronically uh, payment system? Uh, I think in the fair point of view, we need to ask the people who has a periodic mm -hmm. work in that side, so that somebody has uh, uh, like, um, um, you know, um, agreement with anybody uh, of fixing things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an organization, but it's a periodic, like for one year working. But mm -hmm. I, I cannot come for somebody that made a very small things for one day or two days, but months, and ask him pay taxation for it. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at for the long-term working plan that somebody who has work at least for six months or one year, uh, uh, dealing with a different clients, having more work business, that is a person I believe that we need to look at taxation from. That, that's my own suggestions. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has a free working that every day is looking for work, he doesn't have a fixed work, and he's just waiting for anybody to ask him for work, and then I have to say for him, you have to pay taxation for each single uh, work, that's going to be more challenging for him. But uh, I think we need to target the people who has uh, a continuous work uh, mm -hmm. across a year. Yes. That's what makes sense even to track them and see how can we uh, uh, provide them uh, international taxes. Yes. but you've mentioned the importance of data collection and data analysis that would thus help us make uh, a much more uh, well thought of calculated yeah. decision. And that would help the government make the right decisions uh, in terms of pricing, in terms of laying down plans or strategies or targeting certain s segments of society yeah. for uh, certain purposes for s different sectors. Now, is the data analysis and really prepping or having suggestions for decisions being made, is this for the ICT without artificial intelligence or do we include artificial intelligence in the process because we're still not that far ahead in terms of implementing artificial intelligence here in Egypt? All right, uh, let me explain the main concept of that analysis in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We had this data analysis a long time ago, it's not something new. Mm -hmm. But the only difference is how you are uh, doing this data analysis. Before we do such manual process that we are collecting data and it's like in a sheets, then we go through this row and columns and trying to get these numbers more accurate and then we do some charts and some tracking in that side. Mm -hmm. That which is the very manual side and most of the things that most of the organization that are doing right now. Mm -hmm. When the uh, AI came and machine learning came and, and even deep learning came, they say that hey, you don't need to do all these efforts. You need to collect all information available, put it in a such data center clean it, which is called data engineering. Mm -hmm. Data engineering means is uh, I'm just trying to divide data and check what exactly the strategic data I need to analyze. There's a lot of data I don't need it mm -hmm. to, to, to take such decisions. Mm -hmm. So this kind of data engineering is the second process. After data engineering, there's the data analysis, which is how this data will help me to take such decision and even predict mm -hmm. the, the future issues and even to, to make like a corrective and preventive uh, uh, actions mm -hmm. uh, before it happens, which is the AI came on board here. Mm -hmm. So AI came in this kind of stage and the machine learning. So using AI has become very key to do this one. It is not became very advanced now. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of tools and a lot of companies that the main job for them is using AI of data analysis. So we can use that data analysis and AI to get some uh, uh, predictions about uh, actions and then introduce it in a very proper way uh, to the uh, to, to the decision maker mm -hmm. and tell him look this is how we looks like such in a map showing him the issue showing him the information uh, showing him the predictions and this is the best practice that we need to do for the next three four months mm -hmm. then for the decision maker come which is a human part came here and start analyzing some other things that AI cannot realize mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, politics, in terms of economies, and some other external uh, challenging, and they mm -hmm. say, hey, there's the right decision, I need to take it. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of um, reports coming from a lot of companies that have deployed this kind of scenario, and they maintain uh, their own uh, uh, GPT and even maintain the profit uh, mm -hmm. based on that kind of that analysis. So um, um, that's how and why the government starting to collect information from all ministers, have terminals everywhere, and we have a proper uh, data centers on place to start mm -hmm. having that journey uh, uh, for the next couple of, of years uh, towards 2030 vision of Egypt. Yes. Well, I know this question might be a bit far, uh, I mean, looking way ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Now, we're talking about implementing artificial intelligence for the decision makers, yeah. and we're talking about big companies, ministries, governmental decisions to help make the better decisions yeah. for the greater good yeah. in a ma on a macro level. Yeah. Now, when do we actually can start applying artificial intelligence for each and every single individual, for each and every single household to actually have a better, make better decisions, take better decisions in terms of when to go <coughs> shopping, where to go shop for certain things, uh, changes in terms of uh, household expenditures to, to get the, the highest or the most uh, out of how you just deal with your finances or when to exercise or when not to. When can we actually start hoping to implement artificial intelligence within our personal lives? Um, uh, really, um, I, I think we're all looking for that mm -hmm. level to reach. But uh, to be honest with you, there is a major challenge that uh, facing that kind of journey. Uh, uh, one of these uh, major challenges is a security point of view. Mm -hmm. um, um, AI is based on a cloud uh, networking and cloud information, so which means you are sharing information in the cloud mm -hmm. that is proceed and giving you decision at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, a lot of organizations are really scared about how can I give my data outside the premises mm -hmm. and so somebody else is trying to analyze my data and give me what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how uh, uh, the research is coming on board and to have an on-premises AI processor in your own uh, uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So security is one of the things that really uh, making some space between uh, applying fully AI Mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, uh, the security companies and, and the firewalls and this kind of advanced security uh, software is helping to decrease this gap, but mm -hmm. not really fully uh, uh, closed. Then uh, the other challenge is uh, uh, training and learning this one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we still have a gap of knowledge uh, of deploying AI because if you deploy AI in the wrong way, maybe come in the negative side. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's very important knowledge and, and gain more knowledge about it before deploying AI. Mm -hmm. Back for the uh, government and back for the uh, super organization, that is really is going to be easier for them. The reason for this is they have process and they have really agreement with, with a big company. They know how to do dealing with AI and mm -hmm. they know how to select services and platform to deploy. Uh, uh, different than the individual, just uh, you know, yes. download any software and just get full access for your phone and mm -hmm. say that I'm using AI. Yes. So AI is not that way. AI really need a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to read about it. You need to understand why we need it, why we need to deploy it, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 such on. So uh, yes. we really have a lot of mm -hmm. uh, uh, work on that side. And still, with ministries and super organizations, you exactly. still need a lot of, of cyber security. Of course, we hear a lot about the hacking of, course. of such systems. Of course. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of governmental efforts are really trying to alleviate the standard of living of the Egyptian citizens, increasing the uh, minimum wages and the pensions, and also uh, strengthening and bolstering the uh, activities and efforts of the ICT sector here in Egypt to try and protect and hopefully monitor a lot of at least the pricing of a lot of our commodity products. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank uh, Engineer Ramaz Barui, the ICT and Digital Transformation expert for joining us. Thank Engineer you so much, Thank sir. you very much, Thank sir. you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on our International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.